and welcome to the medical interpreter training for online clinic by the UCI Free Clinic Project. Our clinic is called online because that means peace in Vietnamese and it's located in Garden Grove right at the center of a large community of uninsured people of Hispanic and Vietnamese origin. Clinics are held on Saturday from um, 7.40 to 1 p.m. We usually accept patients starting at 8 and we close the appointment times by 11. The extended times for setup and to do a post huddle at the end. Sometimes clinic may run over time and if it does, you are expected to stay the entire time. On a weekly basis, we serve 6 to 12 patients per day. It depends on if patients cancel or if there are walk-ins and the physician is willing to serve more patients that day. The clinic is completely run by undergraduate medical student and physician volunteers. So everyone is volunteering their time here. Um, this is not a paid clinic whatsoever. And this helps because the patients who we serve are not in the best financial um, position. We do have a lot of Vietnamese and Spanish speaking patients because as, as I've said before, we serve the Garden Grove community, so your help is greatly appreciated. We like to learn while we're at the clinic. We have pre and post clinic huddle. So the pre clinic huddle is for the floor manager to kind of tell everyone how the clinic flow is going to work, how like the different positions and what they do. And post clinic huddle is what did you learn on that day? Because a lot of the volunteers there, they don't get the chance to come into the patient rooms and actually work with the doctors. So it's kind of nice for um, them to learn a bit more. At the clinic, there is usually one attending physician or resident. There's a medical assistant from Lestinac. She helps with patient prescriptions and kind of um, doing the, the more like the clinical work behind um, in the background. We have students from the UCI School of Medicine and Western University, and each of them have their own boards. There will always be a UCI board member at, um, at the clinic, and they will help with contacting the physicians and the medical students. For undergraduate students, there's the floor manager. So floor manager is in charge of clinic flow. They make sure everything runs smoothly and that any problems or um, mishaps can be solved. Check in and check out or front office deals with checking in the patients, help new patients to sign up with the clinic, checking the patients out, and then giving them surveys that will be beneficial to our research on the clinic. For back office, um, we have one back office person who takes the vitals such as weight, blood sugar, blood pressure of the patients before they, before they are met by the physicians and medical students. Patient education is one of our newer programs. What it does is we give the patients a chance while they're waiting outside in the waiting room to be educated on certain methods that will help them become healthier, such as, you know, diet. They can ask about, oh, what should I eat? What shouldn't I eat? Um, how much should I exercise? Um, what can I do to lower my cholesterol, etc. Patient navigators are going to go through the whole entire process with the patient from check-in to check-out. They write notes such as maybe what the doctor prescribed, what advice the doctor has, so that the patients have a physical copy of the notes so that they can refer back to them when they're at home. And of course, there are interpreters, so you guys. Um, the interpreters help from beginning to end as well, but they especially help with when medical students and physicians speak to the patients and you guys are the, the middleman who help to create an understanding between the two sides. The role of the interpreter is a conduit or facilitator to facilitate the conversation between the health professional and the patient. You're also a cultural broker as a person who understands both cultures you are the one the physician or medical student will look to when there are um, certain cultural remedies that may not be recognized here in America. For example, in Vietnamese, there's scout ya, and then there's like, and then there's Oriental me medicines such as, you know, herbal remedies or um, 
acupuncture points, etc. You want the best for the patient. So please explain their needs exactly. Don't make it sound as if it's not a big deal. To them, it is a big deal, and that's why they're coming here. And you don't have to be an expert in medical terminology because chances are, if you do interpret to the patient in medical terms, they will not understand. As an interpreter, you can volunteer at our clinic all the way up until the summer of your graduation. At the clinic, we always need two to three Spanish interpreters and one Vietnamese interpreter. If you sign up for a Saturday and you find out that you can't make it, please find a substitute on your own. We have a list of interpreters from our clinic and please um, give us a notice one week in advance. We have a position called the on-call interpreter and that person is backup, they're a substitute. So if someone can't make it, that person can be called to come into the clinic that day instead. A lot of the errors that come from interpretation come from people who aren't trained to be interpreters. For example, family members, hospital staff who may just be passing by, or visitors who may like who may overhear the conversation. Some of the co uh, consequences are that prescriptions get interpreted incorrectly, diseases or um, suggestions are also interpreted correctly. So it's nice to have interpreters who are trained at the clinic. So what we will be doing at the clinic is called consecutive interpretation, which is where the patient or doctor says the sentence and then the interpreter interprets that sentence and says it back. It's not simultaneously where you having a headphone in your ear um, as you're speaking and you can hear the direct translation on site. There are two types of errors for interpreting. So omissions, of course, is leaving things out and that is around 52% of the errors that are commonly made or changing the meaning. So a lot of people tend to maybe want to elaborate on the, um, the, what the pa patient is saying, but as interpreters, we want to interpret what they say, not what we think they mean. For your memory span, it doesn't have to be huge. Please, um, Focus on the meaning, it doesn't have to be literal, and don't get hung on specific words because some words do not translate directly. And if you miss something, please ask the patient or the provider to repeat what they said rather than making it up and hoping that it's right. A way for you to practice would be to watch telenovelas or the news in Vietnamese or Spanish, listen to the radio or read the paper. When you interpret, you will be interpreting in the first person because it is very confusing after a while when you keep hearing the doctor said, the patient said, the doctor said. You want the nurse or the doctor to speak in short sentences so that not only will you be able to gra um, grasp everything that they say, but also that the patient doesn't have um, difficulty kind of breaking it down. This will be addressed in the pre-encounter talk which we will discuss later. When you stand to interpret, please stand either between the physician or patient or behind the patient. Now, it's preferable that you stand behind the patient because that way the patient can't look at you while they're talking because we want the patient and the physician to establish a connection and to communicate to each other rather than through someone standing in the middle. However, we do know that that's not always possible. If it's not possible, then standing in between the two would be reasonable as well. A lot of the medical students or providers, they're not very accustomed to talking straight to the patient, so remind them that please speak directly to the patient, don't speak to the interpreter. If you do not understand what the physician is saying, remember, please tell them to lower their level of register. So for example, if the physician says to the patient, you're hypertensive, hyperglycemic, and your urine analysis is positive for hematuria. Even if you could interpret all of these in um, like directly, the patient will probably not understand all of them. Now a better way to say this would be to tell them to please lower their level of register and what they will say is probably that the patient's blood pressure is high, they have high um, blood sugar, 
and they have blood in their urine. We have a kind of a, a staff room for the volunteers at the clinic and you can probably talk to the medical students and the physicians beforehand in here. What you want to tell them is that you will be speaking in the first person and to remind them to look at the patient, to not talk in long sentences and that we will try to interpret to the best of our abilities. So there's also examples in both Vietnamese and Spanish, um, but remember this is just kind of a guideline. It doesn't have to be word for word. So to prepare yourself for um, the clinic, you don't need professional knowledge of medical terminology, but some basic terminology should be um, acquired. For example, you should know how to say things that are common in the community, such as high blood pressure, diabetes, obesity, etc. It would be nice if you could know what old carts is. So old carts is a way for the physician to learn more about the patient. The medical students actually do go down um, the list. Old carts stands for onset, location, duration, um, character, aggravating factors, relieving factors, other treatments they've tried, and the severity. Systems of the body would be important to learn as well, such as the digestive, cardiovascular, urinary, um, etc. Again, this is a learning clinic. This is a student-run clinic, so we want you you to be able to learn. So please bring either notes or um, something to jot down words that you don't know, so that you can look them up later. Okay, so that is about it for the online training. After the training, please fill out the Masonic volunteer forms and take the questionnaire. You should get 100% because the, the questions are, are relatively simple. And we will check them and make sure that you get that 100% before you, we approve you to be part of the clinic. Um, you need to send in the immunization forms and complete the HIPAA module and send them into clinic operations. For shifts, again, so Spanish interpreters, we need at least two or three per week. Please find a substitute if you if you aren't able to go and if, if you can't find someone, please contact clinic operations. If you need clinic volunteer hours, we will have them for you, so please contact clinic operations as well. For Spanish interpreters, we have a test for you at the end. It's more it's an it's an oral interview, so please talk to the head of, of interpretation for that. All right, thank you. Um, the links for a lot of the forms and um, the questionnaires are down below. Please click, click on them and finish them. Thank you and have a nice day.